we baptize to Jesus Christ? Yes. Okay, so we baptize you to Jesus Christ. Out of the dark, into the light Thought I was lost in life But then he came and opened up my eyes Thought I was weak, no strength You held me up with your hands Made me believe that nothing is in vain Lord, with you I overcome All that was will be undone When life comes around When he comes around When Jesus comes around The life is just, just like a heartbeat. It's up and it's down and then you have big battles and big victories and it just carries on like that. And if it's flat, then you're dead. And so many people are living this mundane life, living this life of the same routine over and over, never truly living. We were living that life, never truly living, never truly being alive because we were just doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Something I discovered is that regular Christianity is safe. Traditional Christianity is safe. No matter how radical we want to make it look, it is safe. We know what to do. We know where the motions are. We know how to climb up the ladder. And uh, the family knows, well, the, the only path is there's just one very clear path to go. But when I started walking in, in, in the leading of the Holy Spirit, it is totally not unsafe but insecure you have no idea what tomorrow will be like but it's safe because you know that god the father has you in his hands behind me we have the church where the reformation with martin luther started 500 years ago exactly in these days martin luther came with his 19 five jesus on this church door behind me because he saw there was something wrong with the church, something wrong with the Catholic Church. And out of that, we saw the beginning of what is known as the Reformation and we got what is called the Lutheran Church. But Martin Luther did not reform the church back to what we see in the Bible. We still have the church building behind me. 
And you cannot see the difference from outside if this is a Catholic church or a Lutheran church. We still have the whole church system, but where is the life? The life is missing. The life led by the Holy Spirit. The life where Jesus is walking by His Spirit in us, where we see that people are getting set free and healed and demons is going out. About nine years ago, um, I was diagnosed with occipital neurologia. It's a painful disease where the nerves in my head get squished by the muscles. I developed it on my left side in the back of my head and eventually on the right side as well in the back of my head. So it was very painful and it limited so much of my life. I couldn't enjoy life to the fullest. I couldn't laugh. I couldn't um, run or do any activities because if I did, the pounding would trigger it, the pain. So I went to many doctor's appointments to try and manage the pain. Um, so one day these people prayed for me. Um, I started shaking and, and manifesting something. And now we pray to God and, and pray for freedom for this sickness and the Holy Spirit. Just close your eyes. Pray after me, God. God. I come to you. I come to you. I repent. I repent. And I ask you. And I ask you. Set me free. Set me free. Heal my body. Heal my body. Heal my head. Heal my head. Come with the Holy Spirit. Come in the Holy Spirit. Right now. Right now. Go. 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 <laughs> come out. Come out. Go right now. Leave her. Leave her. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. I remember feeling like I couldn't breathe, like something was leaving me. Something literally came out of my mouth. And I was I remember coughing and gagging and thinking like I can't breathe. What's going on? Go. Go. Go more. Go. Go right now. Go. Last finger. I was brought to the side for more prayer. Um, and eventually I just felt something literally leave my body. And I also felt intense pain coming out of my ears. Um, very painful, just like blasting out of my ears. And then as soon as that was done, I, I didn't have any more pain. I would test it, I would do certain head movements to see if I could trigger the pain and it wasn't there anymore. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. So the day after I was healed, um, I woke up with pain again and I was really confused. And I talked to someone and they told me like, it's really important to renew your mind. So I started to do that and every time I would get the pain, I would rebuke it in the name of Jesus and then it would leave. I started to understand and realize that it's a battle. So every time I would feel it, I would just rebuke it and tell it to go that I don't receive it and it would go. Today, um, I rarely ever feel it and when I do, I just tell it to go and it goes in the, in the name of Jesus. I wanted to see your father just set free. That was amazing. <laughs> it was an honor for me to baptize my own dad, <laughs> to see him speak in tongues for the first time. <laughs> it's a totally new life. It's a totally new life. <laughs> it's just you are God healed, you are God set free, you are God healed, the Holy Spirit and your Father now and God set free and we see the Holy Spirit and... Wow, I just... God is so mighty. Wow. A big thing in my life was fear. I had a lot of fear in my life and I just felt like I couldn't do anything because I was too scared. It's like I had this big ball around my ankle and I was carrying that everywhere I was going. Like I just was too scared to step out and do anything. When I was baptized, I could feel that leave. I just felt like this big weight come off of my shoulders and I just feel so much more freedom now. Ever since then, I've just had this fire in my heart to uh, go out and pray pray for people and be a disciple. It's really become a lifestyle for me um, just to find people who are in pain and then show them what God wants to do in their life and how much God loves them and just share the gospel with them. And I've just grown so much with God and He's shown me so much as well. And at first it was very scary going out, uh, especially on your own, but then eventually you just get over that and you just really learn to love it. We've had a few people that 
say don't really talk to us anymore. They seem to think that we're like in a cult or really weird or different. But before when I was going to church and not spreading the gospel, everything was okay. But now since I'm going out and living the way that Jesus wants us to live, people seem to look at us like we're weird or something. There's a lot of skeptical people who say things about me on the internet and it can be hard at times when you know you go on social media and you see things about yourself on there but I, I wouldn't change it for the world because now I'm actually living as a disciple of Jesus and it's so worth it I don't it doesn't matter how much persecution I get because you know it means I'm doing something right When you decide to step up and start to live a life led by the Spirit of God, and you start seeing fruit and you start growing, one of the most natural signs is that you will be persecuted. And persecution can take a lot of shapes, but persecution will come, and it has to come. The Bible says that everybody who wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. So there's no way out of that. See, in my mind, Persecution was someone putting a sword to my throat saying to deny Christ or going to crucify me. What comes as a shock for many Christians is where the persecution is coming from. Of course we've experienced uh, persecution from the world out there and for people who don't know God. But very often it's the religious system the persecution is coming from. It's, our family, it's our friends, it's those people who are close to us, it's people in the church. And this comes as a shock for many people, and they're not prepared for that. I really didn't expect friends or family to start looking at us funny, to start gossiping and slandering. People you love, people you appreciate, people that you count as real friends, and when they turn their backs on you, when they start lying about you, when they start persecuting you, then it really hurts because you didn't see that coming. The sad thing when it comes to persecution is it's so easy to get it to stop. We just compromise. If we remember that one thing, compromise, then persecution will stop. The truth is that persecution is not our enemy. Persecution is actually our friends. Persecution helps us to grow because there's two kinds of people. There's those people who experience persecution and fall away. And we don't want to be like them. But we want to be those people who, when we experience persecution, we do not fall away, but instead we fall on our knees and we pray and we seek God. And persecution therefore helps us to come closer to God. Persecution helps us to examine ourselves. Persecution helps us to die because nobody likes persecution. But this is one of the tools God is using today. And we see that in the world today, that those countries where persecution is biggest, those countries often those countries where we see the church grow. And we have 2,000 years of history to show that persecution have never been the enemy of the church. When things are going good, slowly, sin come in. When things are going good, people fall in sleep. But when persecution then start, people wake up and start to see God like never before and the kingdom of God is growing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mambo number five. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody in the car, so come on, let's ride to the liquor store. Hey guys, I am in Berlin right now and uh, I'm going to meet Louis Bega. He came with the song Mambo Number no. 5 some years ago and he's a person of peace right now. It's like Book of Acts chapter 10. 
Peter was led to Cornelius and his household and, and they all repented and received the Holy Spirit and we're going to see the same now. It's like Book of Acts chapter 19 where Paul, he came to Ephesus and he met somebody who already believed in God but they have not yet got baptized to Jesus Christ and had not yet received the Holy Spirit. Louis Bega there, he have come to faith in Christ but he have not yet got baptized in water and received the Holy Spirit. But this is going to happen now and I don't know so much what is going to happen here but no God is there. So welcome and let's see what God is doing. Hello! There we have him and the whole family. Come on. Amazing to see you. Amazing. Long ride. Yeah, you have. Come here, come here. Hey, Tom. Hi. Geneva. Nice uh, Geneva. Nice. Hi. So my wife, myself, my little daughter, we went to the Maldives, a wonderful tropical island in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And we just wanted seven days of relaxation, of relaxing. Uh, Sunshine, snorkeling, nothing else to do. You can circle the island within five minutes. What we got was seven and a half days of thunderstorm. The, the floodgates opened up, rain was pouring, and uh, there was nothing else to do. We were stuck to our bungalows, right? I circled my room, I fell into a depression. That's at least how I felt. And then I found one book I opened up the Bible, I started reading it, and I just remember after like a few pages, I started realizing that this was the truth that I was always looking for. I've looked into different sets of religions before, everything that was trendy and cool, like Buddhism and some New Age stuff. I at least tried to understand it. It never stuck to me, but I tried to. But Jesus Christ, I'm, I've passed him over to my regret for so many years and there he was calling me giving us the opportunity to seek him to find him and i couldn't really run away it was a bungalow on an island so i started reading and now I, I felt so convicted man i was convicted within seconds I, I broke down started crying and now i know that was the holy spirit so I called these people up and it's not in my nature. <laughs> well, it was not in my nature, in my prideful nature before to just call people up and ask them for a favor. But in this case, it was the right thing to do. I knew that me, my family, and everyone around me needed to be baptized and needed to, to draw closer to Jesus. The House of Cornelius is a story about a guy called Cornelius who was a righteous man who was seeking God but he did not know what way to go. He was just seeking God and then one day God led Peter to his house and the whole household came to faith. And I felt it was the same we were going to see here that this was not only about David, uh, Lubega, it was about the whole household, what God wanted to do. And uh, we came there and we entered into that house as we read about in Luke chapter 10. When you find a person peace, you go into the house and you eat and drink what they serve. The Holy Spirit is working through repentance. Nobody can come to God unless the Holy Spirit draws that person. So when we start to see God, it's actually the Holy Spirit who is already drawing us. The first step is repentance. Repentance is a new heart where you get that new conscience, you become aware of things. But this is, this is the beginning of salvation. It's, it's not the fullest picture of it. Uh, because now there is a new life that has started inside of you, but the body is dead. And what do we do with a dead body? We need to bury it, because if you don't bury that dead body, that dead body is going to come and kill the life. God. God. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. I repent. I repent. For my sins. For my sins. And I ask you. And I ask you. Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. Save me. Save me. Set me free. Set me free. Come with your Holy Spirit. Come with your Holy Spirit. Fill me up. Fill me up. Baptize me. Baptize me. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Freedom. Go. 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 Freedom. Freedom right now. Freedom. Leave him. Leave him. Go right now. Fear go. 
fair go, fair go, fair go, fair go, go, go right now in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit of addiction go right now. Go, leave him, leave him, go, 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 bado do go ski salada da holy spirit fill him up more, more. Oh, your love, your love, your love, holy spirit da da kasalada kas kasala fill him up more. That's freedom, that's freedom. Oh, the holy spirit is all you now. Freedom. Shilada da 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 beginning one more time God a new strength inside of him a new life a new life a new life there's freedom inside of your Holy Spirit your spirit God mama da 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 yes yes no 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 Jesus we thank you Holy Spirit we thank you how was that Wow, strange. <laughs> Great though. Oh, it's the Holy Spirit. Come on. Oh, yeah. New beginning, God. I thank you for my friend here. Thank you for a new beginning. Holy Spirit, you have been drawing him. You have been drawing him. You have been drawing him, God. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning, God. There's freedom. There's freedom. And I can just remember that I felt like a baby. I, I can, cannot put it in other words. I felt like a newborn. That's why the term born again is really fitting because you feel like a newborn baby. You're fresh, your transgressions, your iniquity, your sin somehow is gone. It's forgotten. You just know that the Father in that moment has forgotten about your sins. I was so joyful. I was so joyful and clean that my whole surrounding, my wife, she couldn't really relate to me for like 30 minutes before it was her turn. Because we were on two different paths at that moment. I was born again in spirit, not in water yet, but in spirit. And she wasn't there yet. So she looked at me suspiciously, like what happened to him? Because our spirits didn't match at that time. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Hmm. Nice. Thank you. Jesus, I thank you for everything you gave me. Man. Even even in days I was rebellious and didn't listen to you, didn't obey you. You never dropped me. You gave me family. You gave me love. You gave me everything I have. So it's time to give back to you. So it's great. <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> It's like, it's, it's weird. You want to sing, you want to dance, but at the same time, you're just... Oh my God. <laughs> it was just being embraced fully in his kingdom. I think that must have been Adam's feeling, you know, walking the garden. That's the only term that I can come up with. And you're fully connected to God. You know, you're walking his glory. He's watching you with, with, with a loving eye and, 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 and you're just with him. And even though it's just a fraction because we're still in that human body, but it, it was actually the best moment of my life, I could tell, I could say so, yeah. It was way better than winning a Grammy nomination or becoming a football world champion or whatever. This is just the real deal. At the end of the day, this freedom, this salvation is just something you want to share with everyone. And it's a, it's a gift that's for free. You just have to give in. God is not the problem. We are the problem. But instead of sending us all to hell, he did something amazing. He gave us a chance. What he did was he sent his son, Jesus Christ. He did not live in sin. He came on earth pure like Adam and Eve without sin. And he walked here 
and monsters like Adam and Eve. But where we have all sinned, he was the only one who did not do it. As the only one without sin, they took him and put him on a cross like he was a criminal. And he got buried. But because he was the only one without sin, he rose up again. And then he went to heaven and sent his Holy Spirit down here on earth. What do we need to do now? We need to believe in Jesus and believe in his words. And he said that we should repent toward God. And then he said we need to be born again out of water and spirit. We shared the gospel with all of them. And then we start to pray for them. And it was so powerful. One by one, God set free from demons. One by one, God healed. And the presence of God was so strong in that house. God, God I repent. I repent. And I ask you. And I ask you. Set me free. Set me free. Pain go. Pain go. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. I command this spirit. Leave her right now. Go. 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 Go right now. Leave her. Holy Spirit, fill her. More. Let's go. Da 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 Let's go. Let's go. How was that? Is it gone? Is it gone? It's gone. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's gone. It's no. gone. No. I have this for a lot of years. A lot of years. Yes, yeah. and my son knows it. Yeah. Hallelujah. I've been always to the doctor, I take always yeah. medicines. Yeah. It's gone. It's gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Spirit. Last finger. Last finger. Speak. Sheila, last finger. Come out. Come out. Come out. We command this spirit. Go right now. Hallelujah. I'm free. Not the beginning. I'm free. I'm free. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. And as you said, many don't believe in that nowadays. Yes. But this is so biblical. It's what we read it in the is Bible. It's biblical, my friend. It's powerful. Yeah. And people, it's real. <laughs> yeah, it's real, and people need to see it. Hallelujah. I had strange attacks, you know, like voices and thoughts. No, this is not right. Don't do this. This is a cult. And um, my, I, I went to my husband. I said, "Okay, let's stop this. I don't want this." It, It's weird. It, it felt weird to me. He said, no, no, he was smiling and full of love. And he was like, it's beautiful. Don't think like this. This is beautiful. Believe me, believe me. When you are get baptized with the Holy Spirit, you, you, you will feel the same. And I was like, no, I don't believe you. Let's stop this. <laughs> I don't know. I had, had a big attack at that moment. Yeah, and then, then he prayed for me. And I was, wow. God. God, I come to you. I come to you. I ask forgiveness. I ask forgiveness for what I've done. For what I've done. And I take this pain. And I take this pain. And I lay it over to you. And I lay it all to you. And I forgive them. And I forgive them. Everybody who have hurt me. Everybody who has hurt me. And I ask you. And I ask you. Set me free. Set me free. Come with your Holy Spirit. Come with your Holy Spirit. And fill me up. And fill me up. Right now. Right now. Go. 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 Let's go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Right now. Right now. Command this pain. Go. Come on. Go. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Let go. Let go. Pain. Go. 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 Go.
go, hurt, come out, come out, let go, let go. I command this spirit, this spirit of fear, this unclean spirit. Leave her, leave her, leave her, leave her, leave her, come out, come out, go out, come out, go, 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 go. I remember I, I fell down and and I, I felt like something left me and, and then I was I arose the Holy Spirit came into me and I rose like I don't know I was I was also sh shocked at the same moment because, wow, I'm very loud now. But it was the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How was it? I'm I don't know where I am. No. You're still here. Ah, hello. <laughs> Come on. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Oh, that's freedom right now. Thank you so much. Oh, God. Thank you. Oh. Hallelujah. Jesus, we just want to thank you, Jesus. We thank you for you on this place. Jesus, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, it's all about you. It's all about your spirit, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for everything you are doing. Thank you for all the life that's getting changed tonight, Jesus. We want to worship you, Jesus. We want to give you honor. And we say, Jesus, that this will never end, Jesus. This more is, it is, this is our life, Jesus. This is our life. This is what it's all about, Jesus. We want to see your kingdom come, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We want to serve you. Come with your Holy Spirit. Oh, uh, it's cool? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Okay, hallelujah. David, you're not getting baptized to a church. You're not getting, it's not a membership. It's not just an outward sign. This is a really a buried the old life and it's a washing away sins. And you get baptized to Jesus Christ because you die with Christ and you rise up with Christ like Jesus did. It's all about the cross. Jesus died on the cross, he got buried and he rose up again. We need to die, repent toward God. We need to get buried like Jesus got buried and then we rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit. So we are now in Christ. So take your hands down. Are you ready? I'm so ready. On your own faith to get baptized to Jesus Christ? Oh yes, I do. So we take you forward. So on your own faith, David, we baptize you to Jesus Christ. Die with Christ. Oh. Oh. All right. Are you ready to get baptized mm -hmm. on yeah. the name of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you so need love. So we baptize you to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Go down. Now, die with Christ. Oh. Die with Christ. Yeah. When I prayed for her inside before, I really knew right away that she had to commit abortion. And I felt there was some death over her and a lot of shame and a lot of guilt in that. We don't hide it, we're not ashamed of it. We don't put it away and like, hey, we should never talk about it. Come on, there is freedom in Jesus. And, and freedom is to get it out in the air. And, and what you have done, it is wrong. But you're going to wash away it now. And you also have to forgive yourself now. Jesus has paid the price. Die, die with Christ, of with Christ. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, God bless you. Oh, come on. Oh, God bless you. A new beginning. A new beginning. Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> it's a new life. This is why Jesus came to set us free. It was fantastic, and uh, you want more of it. And you start understanding that Jesus is really alive. He hasn't really left us. This was a major revelation for me because like 99% of the mainstream Christians, state Christians, we think he died and he was resurrected and somehow disappeared, right? No, but he's amongst us. If we seek him, he's more than willing to be with us, to dwell with us, but it's us, it's our transgressions, it's our unwillingness that hinders it. So that was maybe the point where I started understanding that Jesus can and wants to be with us if we just let him, if we just seek him. And it makes sense. Anything else is religion. Well, look here, the, the tradition is saying that, that right there, they, they lay him when he right died. Here. Right here? Yeah, so they lay him there before they buried him. Oh. And look here. If people knew Jesus for real, they would, wouldn't need to do this. Jesus said, it's, it's, it's about spirit and truth. Mm. You don't have to go here to worship God. He came to earth so that, so that every Christian can be a living stone, mm. but these are dead stones. We are now the stones. We are now where Jesus Christ is living. It was very shocking for me to see how people in Israel, they worship everything that has to do with God, but they don't worship God. And uh, everybody has made their own belief system and they worship their belief system the rules, the traditions, what it has been taught, what has been said, but they don't connect themselves to have a relationship with God himself. Many people in the world today, they grow up with religion. They grow up with Christianity as a religion without ever knowing who God really is, without knowing Jesus as a person. And there's just a world different between religion and Christianity, the way Jesus came with it. I was raised Catholic till I was 14. When I was 14, I, 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 I got saved and I met God and I changed my life. And we were a small group of people that really loved God, totally different young guys. But with the time that group began to grow and we made it a church. I have served God for around 19 years in that same church, in the same fellowship in Peru where I was born and later in other countries where I moved. And um, I did my very best because for me, the only place where I could serve God, the only place where I could do something meaningful for God was the church or through the church. So now my best friend was the leader of, and I was the leader of, and then my brother was the pastor. Yeah. So then it became just another cult system in which we yeah. compete against each other and we want to get people saved for our sake. Yeah. Of course it's not conscious, but then with the time the Holy Spirit is gone. Yeah. And sin comes back and starts fighting with you and it's like, what is this? I was music leader, worship leader, concert leader, Bible study leader, evangelism leader, uh, and everything in between, of course, and also help with cleaning, organizing events, uh, campaigns. I did as much as I could do because I thought this is the way to serve God. What else can I do for him? The strange thing is that after those 19 years, I never saw a soul getting saved and God using me to bring people to Christ.
what do you mean that the tomb is empty? It means that he's alive. Yeah. Okay, so if he's alive, then we have relationship. Yeah. You cannot have a relationship with somebody who's not alive. You have to be alive to have a relationship. And that means that you can know him. And that's the whole point. Yeah. So there is a difference between reading about him, studying about him, studying about how he lived and what he, he was, and then to know him and what he is today. Jesus, Jesus. I ask you, I ask you. Come, come now. Show me that you are real. Come with your Holy Spirit. Come with your Holy Spirit. Fill me up right now. No. Oh, can I feel it? Yes. How is that? Oh, it's amazing. Have you felt that before? No. no. But what you experience now is stronger than what you experience down there. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Because Jesus is alive. So then God shows up and he just opened my eyes and now I just left all the thing behind. And it's like every week the Holy Spirit is talking, is, is telling me what to do, is leading my life. Quit this, stop that, start, go this way, go that way. And it's, it's, it, it's insane. It's like my life is not mine anymore. I really told God, it really is really, whatever you want is yours. And all of a sudden my, my life looked exactly like what I read in the book of Acts. It was a shocking time, a shocking moment for me when I realized that what I was doing in church was not in any way a threat to the devil. I didn't understand the power of the Holy Spirit and that's why I was not walking in power, healing the sick, casting out demons, showing the power of God, as Paul says. So the time came in which I started walking into that life and God started sending fruit. I didn't have to go and run after people. God sent people. God sent people hungry. God sent the people needy. And I could just give them what I needed and baptize them and teach them and disciple them and make them effective. Pain go right now in the name of Jesus. How is the pain now? Do you feel the pain? A little bit. Why is the little pain? Right here. Okay, pain go, 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 in the name of Jesus. I command last pain to go. Yeah, it's not different. Yeah, you feel different now. Pain go, God, I thank you for strength. Strength to my friend here, strength to his body, strength to his whole body. Thank you for strength to the muscle. Thank you for strength, God. Thank you for amazing time. How is it? This one went away. It went away now? Yeah. And, a little, and here a little bit. Yeah, away. last thing go, last thing go, God thank you, because last thing is going to go in the name of Jesus. How is it to walk? It's uh, better than it was before, I'll yeah. tell you. Yeah. Yeah. How is it? Oh, we have to go. Oh, okay, we gotta go. Yeah, come on, God bless okay, you, okay. God. I follow you up, God. I thank you for freedom. Okay. And then just thank God for it. Thank Jesus and use your body. Okay. Use your body. Come on, this is what God is doing. We are in Capernaum right now where Jesus lived. And this guy, he had been sitting in a wheelchair for a year here, probably with a nerve in the back and in the leg. And, and we just stopped him and, and talk with him. And, and I started to walk with him and, and, and it just become better and better and better. And they actually came now and offered me money and said, do you want money? But no, we don't want money because we got it for free and we're going to give it for free. And it's Jesus Christ. And so I had to imagine here where Jesus walked around here and healing the sick and, and preached the gospel and at this place. But Jesus is the same today. He, he has not changed. We are now his body here on earth. We are now the body of Christ and we are called to go around here on earth and do the same Jesus did. And this is the life. If we look at religion today, and you can take any religion there is, it's, if it's Catholicism or Judaism or Islam or, or any religion out there, in any one of those, we have to work to be good enough. We have to work for our salvation. Where, when we look at what Jesus did, is He came and He did everything for us. See, the thing is that we are slaves, and a slave cannot free himself. If you are captive, you cannot set yourself free. And we are captive, we are slaves to sin. So we cannot set ourselves free. It does not matter how hard we work. That is why God gave us the law, is to show us sin and how we cannot save ourselves. And then Jesus came to fulfill it. He came to set us free from sin. So He paid the perfect price, the perfect sacrifice for our freedom. 
so that we can be free. He became sin so that we can be clothed in His righteousness. One of the guides, one of the kids that was helping us, he was I think 18 or 20 years old, and he was bringing, pulling one of the horses. And we had, we ended up only with this young kid and we started walking down the mountain with him and we could share with him what we do. Do you have pain somewhere? Me? Yeah. We can help you. If you have pain, we can help you. Really? You have no pain in you. I have, look. Oh, what, okay. What happened there? That the horse he was coming down from there and it will put. Okay. Can you lift your arm? Or? Yeah, but with I am hold something it like uh, yeah he will going down uh, alone. Oh yeah. Okay. Really? No, no. Problem. How much? Can, can you try to hold my arm? Try to push him up. Okay. I push him just a moment. With I am hold. Yeah. Like uh, like uh, I hold something. Yeah. 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 He will uh, he will going down. Yeah. Alone. It's okay. not for me. He was going like that and he was yeah. coming down. Yeah. If you get healed, can you then check it? I can check it. Yeah, you can but check I it? I have some problem here. I don't know. Okay. Do you have back hand prayer for you? Look. Yeah, I see yeah. it. He's going to pray. He's going to fix it. Yeah, but I, I pray. But okay. yeah. He's going to fix it. Go and pray for bones to go in place right now. I pray in name of Bones go in place. Bones, bones go in place. Right now, pain go. Heal right now in the name of Jesus. Try again. Try to check it. Big stone. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. I will show you. I don't care. Okay, still? Really? You see? Hold, hold okay. my hand. Yeah. Hold my hand. Yeah. No, no, hold from here. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Go yeah. freedom right now, freedom right now, freedom right now in the muscle. We command go in place right now. We command strength right now, bones go in place right now in the name of Jesus. We command healing right now in the name of Jesus. Try again. You see? Is it better? Yeah, it's better. It's better. Last thing go, last thing go. Completely freedom in the muscle, in the nerve, in the bones. Freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Try again. It's easy. Now you can do it? Yeah, yeah. Really? Hey! <laughs> How is that? I don't know, that's the God for you? This is God. Really? Yeah. yeah. This is God who just healed you. Really? Yeah. Now it's easy. Now it's easy. Really? Yeah. You will hold it, you see, like that. Yeah. But this is the God. When I was 18 years old, you are 18 now. Yeah. yeah. When I was 18 years old, I looked up in the sky and I said, God, if you are there, come and take me. I want to know you. Then a few days later, I heard about Jesus. Have you heard of Jesus? You know him? Yeah. Isa. Yeah. Uh -huh. Isa. And, and when I say, Isa, Jesus, I need you. Come and save me. I call on him and he came and forgave me my sins and God came into me. Really? Yeah. And now we can pray for people and follow Jesus. Oh, that's good. I didn't believe in anything before. I was 18 years old. I had a lot of problems. My mom was sick. But then I said, God, if you're there, I want to know you. And I heard about Jesus. And I was thinking, ah, is that correctly? 
But then I met him and he changed my life. Isa, he's amazing. And Isa, he died on a cross. Do you know the story? Yeah, yeah. And he got buried, but he rose up again. Because, because of the cross, because of what he did, we can experience forgiveness for the things we have done that is wrong. But you have some people who don't know him. Many people, ma many, many people don't know him. But what I did with you, if you know him, you can do with others. Trust me? Yeah, you can do, yeah. I don't know him. No, but if you know him, if you say to Isa, I want to know you, I want to live with you. Can I talk with him? You can talk with him and you can experience the life I have experienced. God. God. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you, Isa. I believe in you, Isa. 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 I ask you. I ask you. Come. Come. Show me. Show me. That you are real. That you are, that you are real. Right now. Just close your eyes. Right now. Let him see Isa that you are real, that you love him, that you died for him. Come Isa, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit, come and touch him right now. Come with joy, freedom inside of him that he will see that you are the life, Jesus, that you are living today, and your spirit is working all over the earth, also here, God. How are you? Oh, can I feel it? Whoa, how was that? It's good. You feel the spirit of God? Yeah. This is real? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, give me a hug. <laughs> you have never experienced this before. No. Whoa. That was God. It was God. Yeah. It was God. Hallelujah, my friend. This is real. <laughs> This is real. And I was 18 when I experienced this first time. When I experienced that Isa is real. I was 18 years old, like you are. And I believe God brought us here today for you. I believe God brought us the whole way from Denmark for you to come to this place, to tell you these words. And he said, what is that? Something came to me. So then we could explain to him that how the Holy Spirit works. We could explain to him that that Jesus Christ had the Spirit of God and the Spirit that God put in Jesus is the same Spirit that God put in us. And that Spirit is what had just touched him and, 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 and wanted to live in him. But he said, but I don't know Jesus, I don't know him. He said, well, you will know him. So what do I do? So just go home, close the door of your room and start asking him, ask him, say, Jesus, I want to know you. I want to see you. So he said, oh, please, I really want to see him. I really want to meet him. So you will, you will. He will come in dreams, he will come, he will come to you. Just keep on searching him. After that, we went to, to Petra, to the ruins, and um, I was a bit cautious, you know, not really approaching people. Pain? Uh, Ow. No, you, so. You're okay? You're good? Yes. Strong? Horrible sight. Yeah. Uh, uh, hard, hard. Smoke too much. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak. I take authority above you and I command you to live. And I speak complete healing on these lungs. Complete healing. Lungs be restored. Lungs be restored again. Grow again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, can you? Oh, Allah. I'm really good. I command you right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, to move. Yeah, look. It's good. Very good. Hold one. Hold one. Hold one. Hold one. 
he said he, he died, but then he was alive again. He went to the father. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's alive. Everything become normal again. Right now, right now. There's no magic. I'm normal man, like you. But it's the spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak right now that all this pain is leaving this body right now. I break the darkness in this boy in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Touch him now with your Holy Spirit. Right now, fill him up. Fill him up. Fill him up and bless him. Photo! There. Something remarkable is that on a part of the, of the way, where, while Torben was talking to the kids, there was this couple that was coming up the stairs, and they look Arabic, and the lady was even wearing the, the you know, these head covers. And later on, Torben approached them and started talking to them. They were, they were not Arabic, they were Americans. And I was, I was surprised. I was surprised of how I was thinking. And we talked to them, and I, we ended up praying for these guys, and they received the Holy Spirit right there at Petra. Father, I thank you for the life of Jay. I thank you that he's your disciple, that he's following you, that he wants to be light in the darkness, that he wants to be salt of the earth. And it's your promise of the Holy Spirit, and I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, I ask you right now, fill him up. Send your spirit, Father, send your promise. It's your promise. You promised it, you promised it for him. Give him more, give him more, Father. Give him more. Give him more, Father. Amen. Amen. You got it, bro. Thank you. You got it, bro. Thank you. It's yours. Thank you. It's yours. You're filled with power from heaven. Thank you. Jesus left the earth so that he could send it. When he was here, people could only hear from God if you talk to him face to face. He could only help three, four, five, ten guys. But now the Spirit can teach you. Now you can just ask God and he will answer you. He will talk to you. It's power. It's a lot of power. Thank you. Awesome, man. That's love you, bro. It's strange to me, you know, that I would, sometimes we just have our own ideas about people and we wait that action will happen, but we can actually make things happen. We can do it anytime. We can do it all the time with anybody. So, you know, it's just loving people, showing acceptance, approaching them with, with a normal attitude and then just sharing with them the life that is in us. So at the end, um, once we finished the tour and we finished everything and, and um, everything was said and done, I told this, this young tour guide who was working with the horse, I said, Do you, I, want, I have a present for you, I have a book for you. I said, okay, I want to I have the book. So we went with him all the way to our car. And um, just we opened the suitcases and uh, Lars looked for it, he had some, some New Testaments. So we could give him that book and he was really nice to see. He said, wow, this is for my people because he saw it was on his language. So we can read this. He says, yes, please read it. He said, please just read it. He asked me, please give me your email, give me your face. I gave him my contact information and we're going to keep in contact. I really, really hope and believe that God is going to raise him up as a person of peace here in the middle of Jordania to reach all these people. Christianity is a journey, and Jesus said that the one that is led by the Spirit is like the wind. You hear his voice, but you don't know where he's coming from, you don't know where he's going to. Part of a journey is that you will go through different kinds of places, and you will face deserts. Deserts are places that are dry when you don't have the basics for survival. 
and when you're totally alone and you feel that you're going to die. There's no resources around you, there's no provision, and there's no company. And you walk alone, and you walk, and you get tired, and you get exhausted, and the worst of all is that you don't know how long that path is going to take, you don't know how long you're going to stay in the desert, you don't know if you will find water, if you will find an oasis, but you need to keep walking. Jesus is our example, Jesus is our role model. We want to be like him. We want to live like him. We are called to live like Jesus. The first thing the Holy Spirit did when the Holy Spirit came over Jesus was that he led him out in the desert. And for 40 days, Jesus was fasting and he was tempted. When I was in a desert period, my marriage falling apart, um, long hours at work, you're physically tired, no friends, and a new country, no family, you feel so alone, um, don't have to fellowship at church anymore because there's no time to go to church. So suddenly I felt so alone, I was in a desert period and I, I didn't know how to get out in my own strength. I, I had depression, um, I just actually wanted to die. Father, I pray that you will restore the bones, the muscles, everything that's uh, got the damage in Jesus' name. Um, Father, you can melt metal. We've seen this, Lord, and we, we just uh, trust in you for complete restoration in this leg in Jesus' name. Can you feel any difference? No. Okay, try and move it. But that's not fair to say. I mean, well, not really. So what level, if t a 10 is really bad and 1 is 0? Okay, so it's, it's fine. It looks worse than it is. It, the worst part's over already. They, they, Do you believe just, in Jesus? Well, I did at one time, but I think it's a little silly because, you no, know, Jesus had nothing to do with it. A bunch of really talented, smart people opened my leg and put metal in there. And now I'm going to be able to walk again, finally, eventually. I was I was such a, I was such a bad person and he's changed my life and that's Are why I just want to say that I'm bad. No, 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 no. I would no, like was bad. I was bad. Why would you have there's never been in my life a no. perfect stranger that walks up to me no. and says, "You know, once I was bad." And uh, how does that come across? No, no, it comes across that. like I don't mean that. Judging. Sorry, I'm, no, sorry, I don't mean that. Well, then why are you yeah. walking up to me? What I just want to—I want to see you healed. That's all. So I'm sorry. Well, then f wait three months and come back to okay. me, man. I don't need you and yeah. your God. Okay. I, sorry. I have science. There's metal in my leg. Uh, it didn't turn out that that good because um, I think he was maybe um, a little bit intoxicated. He got really angry and we started to, uh, speaking about Jesus. Uh, he got up, he got really upset with his wife as well. I think they were maybe uh, busy in a fight as well. Yeah, so just what I see, I know it's sometimes when you're in a situation, heated situation like that where people get upset with you, it's, uh, it's a bit frightening. I almost, I felt the fear inside of me. I, I just wanted to run away. Of course we don't see healings every single time, you know. When you see the videos sometimes on, on, on YouTube or on the internet, it looks so easy because they don't show the full version. They don't show the people that said no before they prayed for them. They don't show how many times they've prayed for the person before the healing actually comes. And uh, we've, we had to learn this the hard way because in the beginning I thought something is wrong with me. If I go out in the streets and I stop people and people say no, it's hard. It, it, it's, it, it's getting easier the more I do it, but especially in the beginning, it was really, really hard. It was really hard for me. Pain go. Try again. No. <laughs> try, try again. No. Nah, dude. That's, Hang on. that's so f <laughs> Hang on. Go down right now, Jesus. No. Nope. Is it any smaller? Nah, dude. That's nuts. No, oh, you have pain now? God, I pray for him right now. Command all pain to go right now in the name of Jesus. Try, try again. How, how is pain? No, the same. The same. Okay. I command last pain go right now. Pain go in the name of Jesus. Try again. I took the pain all the way again today. No, the same. How do you know if there's even a God? Like, how do you know that? Like, 
it's in a Bible. A the the Bible could have been just a together. book they found and then started off as a story. Which, I don't know, that's just how I see it. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, but... We love everything to happen every time, but this is not the real life. The real life is in many ways ups and downs. And I can say a person, I have prayed for so, so many people who have not got healed. I pray for many people who did not receive the Holy Spirit. I have tried to help people where it did not work good. I have given people the wrong answer. I have made a lot of mistakes. But I'm growing and I'm learning. And it's okay to grow. It's okay to learn. It's okay to make mistakes. That is the whole part of being a disciple of Jesus. Watching videos, watching people being set free just like that or being healed just like that because you see an edited version, people should realize that when you pray, keep going, just keep going because the video you watched, they saw the results because they kept going. Hardship and, and, and pain are necessary parts of, of a disciple. Like Jesus said that we need to carry a cross and a cross is not comfortable. It's like a woman giving birth. The woman giving birth is, having, is going through so much pain, but when the baby is born, they don't think anymore about the pain. They, they never look at, at, at their son as, as a symbol of pain, but of, of joy. And they forget of all the pain they had. They forget of the nine months of pregnancy, because a new life has been born. And that's the Christian walk. We, we have so many stories to tell, so many testimonies to tell, that can bring tears to our eyes, thinking of all the amazing things that God has done. But for every single glory before that has been a period of suffering, challenge, pain. I, once, a very long time ago, I heard on a, one TV show, I heard a woman say that if she had to choose between extreme hardship and extreme joy, she would always choose extreme hardship because that's when she's closest to God. And at that time, I didn't understand. I didn't understand what that could possibly mean and I thought she was, she was a lunatic. <laughs> I thought she was crazy. But we have since learned that it is. It's, it's, it's in those really, really hard times when you are at the end of yourself, at the end of your resources. When you really do, you, you, you cry out to God. Deserts are painful parts of life that shape your heart because when you have no resources to lean on, the only thing you have is Jesus. And you cannot get to know Jesus when you are distracted with so many other things in life. I discovered that when I was traveling with my family without cell phones, that I got to know them much better. I got to know my kids better and my wife better because I had no distractions. And sometimes we need to turn off the cell phones of life so that we can have a good time looking in the eyes of God. At the same time, that period of pain is a beautiful period because then you learn to trust in God and not in your own heart because it's so easy to just start getting comfortable with what you know. But on those moments you realize that you need God, that if God doesn't do it, nobody will do it, and all your performance and knowledge and charisma will not do. You need God. process of the Christian life being led by the Spirit is challenge, is fear, is frustration and battle, and then comes the blessing and the victory. And you forget of all the pain it caused you and you give glory to God for everything that you have experienced. So sometimes God doesn't explain His strategy or His purpose, but He sends us in a route and we need to walk that route. And deserts are part of parts of life that will train us, that will make us strong, and that will teach us to trust in God. How can we live a life in faith if we don't have trust? Life in faith is a life in trust. We cannot trust somebody we don't know. And you get to know God in the desert. You don't get to know God in the valleys.
do somebody use 300 million dollars to build this in the middle of a poor area? I have no idea. On the way here, just to go here, we saw people was begging for money. People were trying to sell water. People yeah. were sitting with small shops of small things to just get a little money. Yeah. Christianity started in Israel mm -hmm. as a body, a living body. For many people, Christianity today is a philosophy, yeah. something they have in their head. Christianity for many is an institution. We see that uh, many places like the Catholic Church, Rome and all over Europe also. Christianity in many places is a culture. It was for me. Yeah. I grew up in the culture of Christianity. And then Christianity is for many people a business, not only in America, but all over the world. But this is business. This is the most crazy business I've seen. Many people don't want God because of this. Many people say, why should I follow Jesus? Why should I become a Christian? Because yeah. this is what Christianity is. I really wonder, what would Jesus do if he would be here today? I think he would preach here and then he would be thrown out. And, then, like and then he would go out and preach there. Yeah. So do the same. And I think we're going to do the same. <laughs> as soon as we are finished, I got that deal. Let's see if there's people here who need the Holy Spirit. So I turn around. And I shouted somehow, anybody here who are not baptized with the Holy Spirit? So there was a boy there who did not have the Holy Spirit and speaking tongues. So we went to them. Freedom right now, freedom right now. You are love. You are love, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you come into this temple. Holy Spirit, you come into this temple and you fill him up right now. Then a big security guard came to us. What are you doing? And, and I was like, hey, we're just praying for this guy. He has just received the Holy Spirit and, and he's now speaking in tongues. You are not allowed to pray out here. Praying shall only be inside the temple and it had to be the pastor who's praying for people. So we were thrown out of the temple area and we went just on the other side of the gate and out there, we just start to pray for more people. Come, Jesus. Ben, Jesus. Ben, Jesus. Come and set me free. Ben, me ben, Heal my body. Come with your Holy Spirit. Fill me up. Me enche. Me enche. Right now. Agora mesmo. Agora mesmo. Holy Spirit, fill this woman right now in the name of Jesus. Touch her right now in the name of Jesus. I command this anxiety. Go right now, spirit of depression. Go, leave her. Go, 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 go. Come out! Around the corner you see things like this. Yeah. It's unbelievable that so much money needs to be spent just to, to glorify an institution. Well, this is the real life. If we look at Jesus, where would Jesus have been today? We need to ask us that. Will he have built a temple for 300 million? US dollars? No. No, he would have been here. He would have been here. And Jesus came to not call self-righteous people. He came for people who, who had a need. Yeah. And, and, and people here see they have a need. Jesus said that we should let our light shine to be the salt of the earth, which means that we need to be where darkness is and to be in places where there's no flavor so that they can, they can feel the difference, they can see what we do. We're supposed to invest our life in the life of these people that are in darkness. Just try to come here and try to meet their needs. But this is another side of the real Brazil we, we see and, and there is, is many people here and there's many people all over the world who, who have a different life. Yeah. One day we decided to go another place where we found a big church in the middle of the city. And there outside that church, there was laying a lot of poor people, homeless people, and they were laying on the stone and they were sleeping outside that church. So I got the idea, it could be good to have some chairs to sit up where people can sit down and we could pray for people. So I looked around and I saw there was a shop where there was chairs. And there was one who was working there who had probably in the bag. Frida, 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 Frida. So try, try to... Uh -huh. She's like, wow, I think I'm never going to feel that pain here. Yeah. And then the boss came to me and 
He actually believed in God, but he had never been baptized with the Holy Spirit. So we prayed for him and the Holy Spirit came over him in that shop and he met God and he started to cry and to speak in tongues. And then we said, actually what we wanted was to borrow some chairs. Yeah, here, just take them. Hey, you speak English? Do you have pain somewhere in your body? Okay. Okay. Freedom right now in name of Jesus. I command last pain go. How's the pain now? What? Amelia? It's all gone. Yay! Freedom. In the name of Jesus, right now. T try to feel it back. <laughs> oh. It's gone. All gone. Yeah! Okay, come on. Can, can, can. Back going place in the name of Jesus, right now. Is it gone? It's gone. Holy Spirit, more. 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 Touch his heart. Sit him free there. Oh, Jesus, come. Come with your person right now. Let go, let go. Go, 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 go. Jesus is there. He wants to give you a new life. Life, life into those hands. Jesus is the answer. He died on a cross to set us free. When Jesus walked on earth, he healed the sick. He set people free from demons. And he proclaimed the kingdom. People met God and people experienced healing and we are preaching the gospel. And some of the homeless guys outside the church saw that and a few of them came to us. And there was especially one guy I prayed for and... Então, eu sou um cara que já faz, já faz 26 anos que eu moro na rua. Onde que a gente vive é uma igreja, né? E a gente fica nas escadas ali sentado, eu e outros moradores de rua. Outras pessoas também que estavam na mesma situação que eu. E... As pessoas dessa igreja, elas não nos aceitam lá dentro, nos bancos. A gente não pode ir lá tomar água. Eles não têm uma, não ajudam numa alimentação, nada. Única e exclusivamente, a gente fica na escada. Porque daí se, eles não podem se misturar com a gente, que nós somos seres humanos, iguais a eles. Então, a gente, nós somos considerados lixo por aquela igreja. Daí, no dia de ontem, Chegou uns caras lá, umas meninas, fazer oração lá na praça onde eu estava vivendo atualmente, né? Foi assim, na verdade, estava vendo o povo fazendo oração. E eu fui lá que eu queria um abraço, porque eu sou uma pessoa muito carente de afeto. Ele só quer um abraço de você. Deus abençoe você. Oh, obrigado. Você fala inglês? Marla. Não, Jesus? Sim, uh, yes, Jesus. Jesus. I love Jesus. Close your eyes. Feche seus olhos. Say Jesus. Jesus, diga. Repita, Jesus. Jesus, diga. I believe in you. Eu te, acredito em você. Eu acredito em você. I want to live with you. Eu quero morar com você. Quero morar com você. Set me free. Me liberte. Me liberte. Come with your Holy Spirit. Vem com seu Espírito Santo. Vem com seu Espírito Santo. Fill me up. Me encha. Me enche. Right now. Agora mesmo. Agora mesmo. Feche os olhos. Freedom, 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 freedom. Let it go, this lie, I command this lie, leave it, body, come out. Every addiction, every addiction, every addiction, I command you, leave it. Fill him up. Oh, you're alive. He love you. He love you. He love you. That's freedom. That's freedom. That's freedom. That's very good. <laughs> Oh. oh! Oh my God! Man! Oh, this is Holy Spirit. This is Holy Spirit. De conhecer o Espírito Santo, de estar perto dele, uma pessoa suja, corpo sujo, a mente suja, sabe? De repente chegar um cara e fazer oração para você e simplesmente se to jog us in the arms of the Spirit Santo, of God. This guy followed us the whole way back to the hotel. 
he slept outside that hotel that night. We found out that the day after because he came to the meeting. E daí, no decorrer do, da reunião, né? A gente foi, foi falando, falando, explicando que era o batismo, que era o Espírito Santo, como é, se encontrar com ele. This is not easy for him. Isso não é fácil para ele. Because Satan is going to lose here. Porque Satanás vai perder aqui. And he has really bound you in many areas. E ele realmente te prendeu em muitas áreas. Are you ready on your own faith? Na sua própria fé. To get baptized to Jesus Christ. Se batizar no nome de Jesus. So we baptize you. Te batizamos. To Jesus Christ. Then just go down. Die with Christ. Rise up with Christ. When he came out of the water, that spirit started to manifest and he was so angry and he looked at me with the most evil eyes. Go, 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 Tinha uns demônios lá que não queriam que eu batizasse, um negócio ruim, né? Que eu tava sentindo antes do meu batismo. Mas depois do meu batismo, eu tô me sentindo uma pessoa leve, tô me sentindo feliz, eu tô sentindo a presença de Jesus perto de mim, do Espírito Santo mesmo, do próprio, porque. In the evening, he brought five, six of his friends to the meeting, and they have seen the change in him. Nesses dois dias da minha vida so, days, uh, my life was se tornou de nada a um evangelista. <risos> I felt we should do more. So we all took up a gift to them. We all gave money and we gave it to the church there and the church rented a house where those homeless guys could stay, could live, and together they started to disciple them and it was so beautiful. And they are now not homeless anymore. They are born again, they are disciples of Christ and they have got a new beginning. Many people are not used to this because they are used to religion. This is about relationship. Maybe you look at me and think I'm special. You think that hey, he's a pastor, he's a special man of God. No, this is not about me. It's about Christ in me. And if you repent, if you get baptized, and you receive the Spirit of Christ, you have exactly the same I have. This is the beginning. There is a life ahead. And in that life, there is persecution. In that life, there is hard times. In that life, there is pain. I cried a lot. I've gone through a lot. But what you get out of it is so much more beautiful. This is the Holy Spirit coming over people. Go, 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 brother. Sometimes it's demons, sometimes it's physical. But we are called to cast it out no matter what it is. 
Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You have it inside of you. To come back to what it's all about. We need to come back to a relationship with God. Um, please just be here with your guidance, with your kindness, and with your love, and with the truth. And that the truth will set us free. That is your word. That is your cause. That is all we need to know. That's all we need to have. Everyone wants to be free. Well, this is one year after the baptism. We're sitting in uh, our new place. Yeah, I would say it was a filled year. Much, much change. It's very hard for myself to explain it in a perfect way, but one thing I can say, it wasn't boring. We believe God took us out here for a purpose, and it has to do with two things, with personal freedom for the family as well, which is important in these times, and it has to do with a, a calling to like, invest more into the lost, the broken, the neglected, those that we usually do not really like to, you know, invite to our fancy homes. So we decided to go to the countryside. First person that got put on our hearts is a guy called Christopher. We were at, at his shelter, at his home, where he's living, where other homeless people living too, and we talked about God and he was touched. At the beginning, it was hard for him to open up because we were strangers to him. But then uh, he was touched by the Holy Spirit. So that's why we came back and brought him to our house. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is cups and cookies. <laughs> okay. That's okay. all. Okay, pass jetzt auf, das ist interessant für dich. Jesus war ohne Sünde. Sohn Gottes ohne Sünde, rein, reinen Herzens, voller Liebe. Und Jesus wandelte um die Menschen, er heilte die Menschen, er, er erzählte ihnen von der guten Nachricht, dass sie erlöst werden können, dass sie mit Gott wieder Gemeinschaft haben können, um ins Himmelsreich zu kommen. I really feel like a different person, I can say. And uh, a lot of changes happen in our lives and uh, I see the life with a, with a different view, totally different. In Wirklichkeit ist er da, gerade hier. Yeah. Und wünscht sich von dir, dass du es erkennst. Er ist auferstanden. Auferstanden heißt, er ist hier. Er ist nicht unter der Erde, er ist da. Da. Und er sieht in dein Herz und er weiß, Sohn, heute ist der Tag, an dem du gerettet werden kannst. Ich will nicht, dass du aus meiner Hand gerissen wirst. Wie jetzt? Wie jetzt? Du weinst, schau, das ist gut. Das ist gut. Lass es laufen. Lass es laufen, das ist gut. Das ist gut, Bruder. Das ist gut. Wir bitten darum, Vater, bring deine Liebe in sein Herz. Zeig ihm, was für eine Liebe in ihm steckt. Komm on, Vater. Bring alles in deine Liebe. Zeig ihm, wer du bist. Zeig ihm deine Wahrheit. Zeig ihm deine Wahrheit. Ja, today because he only has this one close for today and um, we bought him some clothes, some good clothes and, uh, for the new creation. So yeah, he's going to get baptized, so yeah. Okay, stirb mit Christus. Stirb mit Jesus, ganz runter, ganz runter. Also, stirb mit Christus. Stirb mit Jesus. 
We thank you for healing, we thank you for peace, freedom, for the new life of this new creation. Father, this is your son. We present the new son, the new creation to you. We thank you so much for bringing him into our knowing so that we could give him to you, Father. Jesus said, I was a stranger and you didn't take me in. I was a prisoner, but you didn't visit me. I was naked, but you didn't clothe me. I was hungry and you didn't feed me. Thank you. Der liebt dich, hat dich nicht vergessen. Weißt du? Super. Wir danken dir. Danke, Jesus. Vater. Ja. Danke dir. Die Bibel hole ich dir und bringe sie dir. As uh, we brought Christopher home to his shelter and we drove back to our house, I was crying. Because I realized that I have totally changed. I do now things that I have never done before. Baptize people, pray for people, talking to strangers. Before we were on parties, it uh, was about me, myself and I. And now I'm praying for a really, a really lost guy in my home and hugging him and the love in me. Is, is Jesus' love, is, is the love of Christ. When you win a Grammy Award or a World Music Award or any kind of award that I won, I know the feeling and I know that there are standing ovations and the whole world stands in front of you and they adore you and you're the best. But you go to your hotel room and you're still the same. You haven't evolved into something different than yourself. Sadness creeps in, loneliness creeps in, and still you know that the rest of the world adores you. So I know that's how I felt, and I know that many of my colleagues feel like that. And I believe very much that once you seek the truth, you shall find it. And the only truth that is really truth is the Son of God. Son of Man, and what he did for us. Nee, maar niet maar ook vreet, nee, alsjeblieft. Ik ben hier in de pijn. Ik is Ilse, aangenomen kennis. Hello, Cola. So he, he, he's got um, some, some, what's wrong with your hand? Oh, a stroke, he had a stroke. Okay, what's bad for that? What's your name? Yeah, Cola. Cola. Full movement, come back in Jesus' name, and all those fingers. This tension, get out of this muscles. The stroke, I curse the stroke in Jesus' name. I command healing right now in Jesus' name. Spirit, get out! Get out! Get out! Get out, get out, get out. Leave, leave him, leave, leave. Spirit of infirmity and sickness, get out. I speak life in cola. I speak life in cola in Jesus' name. Life. Strength come back. Strength come back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Set him free. Set him free. Set him free. Set him free. This curse that's been spoken over your health. Get out! Curse broken in Jesus' name. I break this curse in Jesus' name. Get out! Get out! Stroke, let him go. All the way. All sickness, get out. Sickness, get out. Get, leave Kolo in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over Kolo right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. 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 Hmm? <laughs> Wat is gebeur? Het iets gelag? Het iets van jou afgeklim. Kijk jou aan, het is beter. <laughs> jou aan, het is beter. <laughs>
Yeah. Oh, donkey. Donkey Jesus. <laughs> Kijk hier, hand van stijf. Kijk hier. Wow. Voel je beter? Het is Jesus. Jesus is, Jesus is die kracht voor alle kracht. Jesus is die naam voor alle naam. Je kan niet op zijn naam roepen. Geen andere geest niet. Niet Jesus. Ik ga je arm op. Ligt de arm op. Kon je dit gedoen het? Kon hij dit doen? Voel je beter? Hij is veel much better. Hij kon niet doen. Thank you, Jesus. Halleluja. Wauw. Wauw. De arm is nou los. De arm is los. Kijk daar. So that was just amazing. So when we came, he, um, he had a stroke apparently um, on one side. So his one hand was stiff. Yeah, and he couldn't mo open his hand completely and his, um, he le his legs got uh, numb as well many times. So yeah, we just prayed and something left, you saw something left him. And then his hand started slowly but surely just opening more and more and he said the legs is returned to normal. Yeah, they're not numb anymore. I love what Paul says, it's like I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of salvation to those that believe. And this is what we see. When we preach the gospel, hearts are changed. When we preach the gospel, people come to Christ. When we preach the gospel, people are saved. That is the power of salvation to those that believe. Jesus commanded us to go out and preach the gospel. It's not an option. He didn't say, if you feel like it, or if you have time, or if you want to. He commanded us, you and me, believers, Christians, he said, go out and preach the gospel to all creatures. So if we are only healing the sick, we're not obeying Jesus. If we are only doing good works, charitable works, we're not obeying Jesus. It's about the gospel. It's about him coming down to save us from sin and giving us the power to walk just like he did on this earth. It's about him giving us the power and the authority to represent Him well and to share the good news to everyone around us. It's about preaching the gospel to all creatures. Wie van jullie weet hoe om skaak te speel? Chess. Ek weet nie. Maar ek, wat ek weet is daar is reels. Na? En skaak. En die reels sê dat elke persoon krijg een beerd om te beweeg. Kom ons kyk wat is die reels van God. Ons sien aan die begin het hy alles geskep. Hy het beweeg. En dit was goed. Hy het een perfecte aarde gemaakt. Daar was nie hongersnoot nie, daar was nie moeilikheid nie. Maar hy het gesê van hy boom van kennis van goed en kwaad mag jy nie eet nie. But man moved. They disobeyed and they sinned. God looked at this and was like, this is not good. This is not good. Man comes out, they start multiplying, they have children, they steal, they kill, they're envious, they lie, they do all these bad things. And God was by her, he said, he is jammer that he has made it. Because one day you're going to stand in front of him and you're going to be naked and you're going to know one thing that you are guilty, 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 because you've broken his commandments. You see, many people think that if you've broken maybe one commandment, you're still a good person out of the Ten Commandments. Or you can score six out of ten and still go to heaven. But we know that God says if you've broken one of his laws, one of his commandments, you are guilty, you've broken them all. The higher the authority of the person we're sinning against, the higher the consequence. So therefore, we can stand in front of a holy, just, righteous God with no sin in him and be judged and go to his prison, hell, because it's his command that we are breaking. And if we understand this, then we know that we need a savior. So he sent his son Jesus to pay the price, to save them. So whose move is it? It's our move. As soon as we say, Father, I'm sorry for who I am and what I've done against you, we move, we repent to him. He moves straight away. He forgives our sins. As soon as we get baptized to Jesus Christ, he washes us clean. God moves straight away and he fills us up with the Holy Spirit. He moved. You've 
never moved before. What are you gonna do? Everything changed when I heard the full gospel. Suddenly, it became life. It showed me that I can actually be a disciple as well. I've been called as well to follow Jesus. So suddenly we, we went out uh, on the streets and we could pray for the sick and I saw healing through my hands. I've got the Holy Spirit in me and I saw Him working through me. I never thought that was possible. And that just changed my whole life. Living the gospel. So Il uh, it's one of the nurses that works here. So Ilza just asked whether there's somebody in pain. She said, well, we can come in, so we'll see. <laughs> You've got stomach pain? Mm. Very bad. I come on all this pain to go, all infirmity infection. Go in Jesus' name. Full. What's your pain? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You have stress at home. Yes. God sees. Keep giving it to him. Keep giving it to him. Keep giving it to him. He sees you. He sees you. Come here. You're healthy? You don't need to sit here at the clinic anymore. Here we go. He's good. You are precious. You're welcome. Tell them what happened. This is my. She just got healed. No more pain. Anyone else have pain? We don't obey Jesus for brownie points or for rewards. We obey Him because we love Him, because of what He's done for us. So we want to glorify Him. We want to lift Him up. We want the world to know that He is the Saviour, that He is the good news that came for the world. Many people will sit and pray and fast before they step out in faith, but it's actually much easier than that. You see, God has already said, go out and make disciples. And that is easy. We've got the Holy Spirit, so we just obey Him. It's not about a feeling. Sometimes He'll just give you a small idea and you just obey that. You just go, Lord, I trust this is you. I'm going to go regardless. I'm going to preach the gospel. Do you want to be baptized? Yes. Amen. Do you want to be baptized? Amen. Wait, now. Now. I read this quote quite a lot where people would say, um, preach the gospel every day and if necessary use words. And it sounded really beautiful. But I see that it's not biblical. In fact, it is very far from. Because the Bible says that how will they believe if they have not heard? And how will they hear if no one tells them? And who will go and tell them if no one is sent? So Jesus sent us 2,000 years ago. He said, go, go and preach the gospel. So that is what we do. We just step out wherever we are, in a shop, in a mall, in a, at home, in friend's house, wherever, whoever you meet. This life is something God, He wants to give every one of us. When you have experienced this life, you cannot go back to religion. You cannot go back to the old thing again. You will be changed forever. You are willing to experience persecution. You are willing to sell your house and give it away if this is what God is calling you to. I'm still learning to completely trust Him every day. Because still I want to do things out of my power, right? once in a while, because I'm just used to it for such a long time. But he, he timed everything beautifully. He took us out here. He brought people in our lives. He supplied, he provided. Yes, he's a loving father. What I realize is um, if you come to Christ, his love grows in you and you have the love for other people. 
And that is the living water, it's fulfilling. And I encourage all the people in the world that he's the only one, he's the truth, he's the life. Life produces life. Where there is life, life doesn't stay alone and isolated. It reproduces itself. If you have grass growing somewhere else, it will keep on growing. If you have a tree, it will keep on growing. If you have people, they will multiplicate. If you have cattle, it will multiplicate. Life produces more life. And if your Christianity is alive, if you are walking into the life that God sent us to walk in, your life will produce life. Your life will see results. You will have babies, you will have children, you will have multiplication. You will see yourself re replicated in more people. Life doesn't come with routines and traditions and frustration. That is death. But life produces life. We are covered by Jesus Christ. We are in Him and His Spirit is in us. And therefore we can go out and obey Him in everything. It is a life of abundance. It is, it is, it's an adventure. Jesus died so that we can have the life. We can have Him. It's a relationship. Suddenly, the heart monitor is not dead anymore. It's not a straight line anymore. Suddenly, there's a heartbeat because we have life. We started out writing new songs like For the Kingdom, especially like a, a baptism song because this was our beginning and we wanted to share it with people. Yeah, we're very excited about how the people will react on it or how many people will come to Jesus, to Christ because of this music. Dear Lord, show me the path to you. I want to pick up the cross. I want to follow you. Show me how to deny myself and how to walk in your perfect will. Never let go of my hand until we stand in that promised land. You spoke all life into me. Your every word sets us free. We need to walk to the river.
Harvest is plentiful, labor is few. If you look round like America, you see that it's true. All these workers don't know where to go or what to do. Direction is always in question. Well, I got a question for you. Tell me if a farmer sees a harvest and it's ready, does he stay or does he go? Yeah. Or does he stand outside the barn with the waving of his arm? Start hoping the harvest come through the dope, man. Knowing that it's plentiful, well, I'm just asking questions, but the answers, man, I already know. That farmer grabs his tools, gets to reaping, cause he know that time is short and there's a lot of work to do, man. Everybody wanna see a mover guy, but nobody moving, yeah. In order to be part of a movement, you gotta be a movement, yeah. Jesus is telling us go, that is a commandment. So please tell me which part to go, aren't we understanding, man, so go. Underlay go. I know that this temptation to lay low, but you gotta come out of your comfort zone. Cause the harvest is plentiful, labor is few. We gotta go out and get to the reaping. The fruit is so ripe, but there's no one retrieving. Then we sit around like, oh God, what I do? When there's a whole harvest out there that just grew, just go. Underlay go. Man, we gotta go, man. Underlay go. Underlay go. We gotta go, man. Underlay go. Come on. Underlay go. We gotta go, man, underlay, go Just go, yeah, yeah, just go Yeah, yo, we gotta go, I ain't kidding We are given the light that's not meant to be hidden We are given the life that's not meant to be living in fear Caught up in bondage and habitually sinning Jesus died on the cross, not to save us from hell But to save us from sin, the part of us that rebels Now we supposed to be free, no ties down to rebellion Glory be to the Father, deserving of all the honor Man, we shouldn't ask God for permission To do what he commanded, nah don't gotta say it, Lord, let your kingdom come Cause it's already landed, yeah And we were not saved by good works But we were saved for them, yeah And works of faith are necessary for our lives Man, we cannot ignore them, man So go preach the gospel and go heal the sick Don't focus on whether you got the gift Cast out the demon if it needs to be done Then show them these signs always point to the sun Better go for Jesus if you go for Pokemon The worker worth the wages if the work is getting done Man, stop examining yourself and what seems right Just know, Jesus said go, that's a green light, man, go And when you go, don't forget to go in love It's something that never fails, it's always more than enough And there is no pressure out there, you just planted some seeds And some will come round in water and God will bring the increase That together we reap, if we don't Plant a seed, then nothing can never grow. So go, wind it, go. Just make it part of your life. The world can encounter Christ. Go be what you purchased to be, cause you were bought with a price. Oh yeah.